the congregation will stand. We'll be singing in the garden. scripture I'd like to read comes out of Proverbs chapter 3 
verses 1 through 10. I chose the Passion Version. It's titled, The Rewards of Wisdom. My child, if you truly want a long and satisfying life, never forget the things that I've taught you. Follow closely every truth that I've given you, and you will have a full, rewarding life. Hold on to loyal love, and don't let go. And be faithful to all that you've been taught. Let your life be shaped by integrity, with truth written upon your heart. That's how you will find favor and understanding with both God and man. You will gain the reputation of living life well. Wisdom's guidance. Trust in the Lord completely and do not rely on your own opinions. With all your heart, rely on Him to guide you. And He will lead you in every decision you make. Become intimate with Him in whatever you do. And He will lead you wherever you go. Don't think for a moment that you know it all. For wisdom comes when you adore Him with undivided devotion. And avoid everything that's wrong. Then you will find the healing refreshment your body and spirit long for. Glorify God with all your wealth. Honoring Him with your first fruits, with every increase that comes to you. Then every dimension of your life will overflow with blessings from, from an uncontainable source of inner joy. <coughs> Betty, Elaine Edgar, 90 of Garner, Passed away peacefully Friday, April 5th, 2024, at Mercy One North Iowa Medical Center in Mason City. Betty was a beloved wife, mother, sister, grandmother, and friend whose legacy of kindness and compassion will forever live on. Betty, the oldest of seven children, was born December 1st, 1933, in Missouri, Iowa, to Bernard and Ida Cohen Smith. She attended school in Missouri, graduating from Missouri Consolidated School in 1951. After high school, Betty worked at Northwestern Bell Telephone Company in Garner. On December 9, 1953, she married Elmer Medley at Albert Lee Presbyterian Church. They made their home on the family farm west of Hayfield, and they, were, and they raised their four children, Arlen, David, and twins, Jody and Judy. Life on the farm had its challenges, but Betty always handled it with grace and resilience. The year after Elmer's stroke in 1981, they moved to their home in Hayfield. Betty began working at Hancock County Memorial Hospital in Gray as a cook in the dietary department, a role she cherished for nearly 20 years until her retirement in 1998. Her dedication to her work and the well-being of others was an inspiration to all who knew her. She was a member of the Upper Flat Evangelical Free Church north of Red and enjoyed many social gatherings. Throughout her life, Betty's faith in God was unwavering, the constant rock for her family, living her life on the principles of love, kindness, hospitality, and generosity. She believed firmly in the power of prayer and was always ready to lend a helping hand with joyful and positive spirit. Betty found joy in the simple pleasures of life, whether it was preparing and serving meals for others, tending to her flowers and garden, observing the beauty of nature through bird watching, or spending quality time with her ever-growing family. In November 2019, she moved to Prairie View Apartments in Garner, where she continued to touch the lives of those around her with her warmth and grace. Her love knew no bounds, and her presence will be deeply missed by all who had the privilege of knowing her. Though she may be gone from our sight, she leaves behind a legacy of love, compassion, and faith that will continue to inspire generations to come. May her soul rest in eternal peace with the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and her spirit live on as a blessing to all who knew her. 
Betty is survived from, by her four children, Arla, Mary, Ned Dredd of Garner, David, Ferdy, Ned Dredd of Hatefield, Jody, Alan, Young of Waverly, Judy, Myron, Buckleman of the Lakota, 11 grandchildren, Jill, Ross, Graham, Kim, Michael, Myron, Laura, Josh, DeVries, Nathan, Andrea, Nedvid, Aaron, Bree, Nedvid, Bradley, Nedvid, Michelle, Taylor, Wagner, Rachel, Austin, Versa, Jordan, Buckleman, Kelsey Young, Brittany Young, nine great grandchildren, Camry and Kenzie Graham, Jace and Jensen Myron, Sophia DeVries, Ryer, Brindley, and Ledger Edbed, and Oliver Verza. Siblings, Ione Haynes, Lois Jennison, Elvin Smith, and Joanne Mike Ritter. Sisters-in-law, Georgia Smith, Joanne Smith, Donna Nedbid, Joanne Nedbid, and many nieces and nephews. She was preceded in death by her parents, husband, Elmer, brothers, Edward and Arlen Smith, brothers-in-law, Merrill Jen Jennison, Ernie Haynes, Haynes, Arnold Leota Nedbid, Donald Nedbid, Aldridge Nedbid Jr., and sister-in-law, Jackie Smith. We will now have Jake Garden soloing one day at a time.
that it had been. When preparing, preparing a message, I try to slow down and, and wait, listen, see what the Holy Spirit has for advice, signs or promptings. Betty, who was she? She had many titles in her life. She had mom, grandma, great grandma, wife, sister, friend. What title would be fitting of such a great woman? How about matriarch? In searching the definition, it says that a matriarch is a woman who is head of the family or the clan. In that definition, a person could maybe miscue it, misinterpret what it really means, like maybe that person demands respect and power. So here's a better one that I found. The word matriarch may seem or feel archaic, but it's the best word we have to describe women who have earned respect and gained wisdom to enrich a family or a group. Oh yes, this is our sweet Betty. Mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, wife, sister, and friend. She never demanded respect or power, but she earned it through her strong faith in the Lord and deep study of God's word. She gained wisdom, yes, through years on this earth, but more importantly, through having a personal relationship with Jesus. One thing I find myself doing when I meet people is to compare them to a person from the Bible. Sarah came to my mind, her baby. So I tossed in Sarah's name in the computer and the first thing that came up was Sarah, wife of Abraham, matriarch. Thanks, Holy Spirit. Abraham, wife Sarah, was known as a pious woman, renowned, renowned for her hospitality and beauty. And what is pious or piety? It is respect of God, a generous love toward Him, and affectionate obedience to Him. Holy Spirit hit the target again. That fits Betty to a key. As my wife and I were sharing our recent last visit with Miss Betty, we commented on the whole time we were there. She was more worried about us in that hospital bed. Oh, I wish I had a chair for you to sit here. Or I wish I had some coffee to put on for you. That servant's heart never left her. Life was never about her, but about others. About her family, about her church family, and her friends. So inviting, so welcoming, she lived her short life on this earth. Oh, I know what you're saying. 90 years, how is that short? Why, well, yes, for an earthly existence, it seems long. But compared to each other, it Jesus. See what I mean by short? The word short, the short time we got to know Betty at the Upper Flat Church, north of town. I don't recall really asking her what some of her favorite scriptures were, but I know she helped us lead a Bible study group after services on the Book of Romans. And I could see asking her and receiving this response from her. Well, I don't know. There are so many. They're all good. When asking the family for any, if, if they knew, I received a few that Betty had written down on a separate paper that was slipped into her Bible. Something tells me these are the scriptures she wanted to share with all of you today. The first one was the one I read earlier in Proverbs chapter 3. The second one is Deuteronomy 31.6. In the New King James Version, it says, Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, He is the one that goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Now this was um, Joshua being led into taking over Jericho. And that the Lord says, don't worry, I got this. 
Just have faith. I think of Betty when I recall this story. There is a story of a mother who having three sons fighting in the Revolutionary War. They were farmers by trade, who back in that day, they would farm for a moment for a few weeks and then they'd go fight for a few weeks. And then they'd come back and tend the farm. One day this mother, um, husband deceased, witnessed her three sons coming running across the farm and hiding into the barn. The red coats, red coats strong in their tail, when the red coats got to the farm, they asked the mother where the men are. She said, there's no men here. The British officer continued to press as his men were pitchforking the loose hay in the barn, looking for her boys. Then she heard one of them say, torch the barn. Then she did an amazing thing. She announced, I don't have time for this nonsense, and sat down at the spinning wheel on the porch and started singing hymns. The British officer, seeing her calmness, called off his troops, packed up and left everything. No mother would be this calm, he replied, if her sons were in the barn and we were going to torture. A mother's love for her kids, but the strength and courage coming from the Lord. Betty had this God given strength and courage to pray into any adversity that her family or friends were going through. She was such a prayer warrior. Another scripture she chose for us comes out of Mark chapter 11, 24. The New King James Version says, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Jesus disciplined his followers, his followers, excuse me, that it would have a desire to move mountains, throw them into the sea, as long as they had no doubt that it would happen. We are his disciples now carrying on the faith. Most people don't understand that these promises are given to us. The Gospels are not done. Finite pages and four chapters in a book, but the living words of Christ Jesus. Is our faith as tiny as mustard seed? Well, no problem, enough to move mountains. You might feel like you have some mountains right now in your life. Well, what are you waiting for? Move them, ask, pray, and believe. Betty was a prayer warrior. From her secret place at home, she had those quiet times, those personal conversations with our Heavenly Father, praying, believing, and seeing her faith, with faith, her prayers being answered each and every day. The fourth one she had down was Psalm 103, 2 through 4, New King James Version. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. This passage personifies dear sweet Betty. See, this scripture begins with bless the Lord, meaning start your day with blessing and praising Him for a new day, welcoming Him into your day. I think of the hymn, Bless the Lord, O My Soul, when reading this passage. And a verse from the hymn goes like this. The sun comes up, the new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before you, let me be singing when the evening comes. Betty's words still ring in my ears. Well, I hope so. And then you ask her, it was a wonderful, humble response from her. I would like to try something a little different that you may be used to. I'm going to ask you for about a 30 second silence, closing your eyes. And I wish you recall silently a moment you had with Betty, with mom, with grandma, great grandma, sister, friend. 
a memory that stands out to you. Please begin. Did you feel joy, sadness, a warm feeling in your heart? See, she may no longer be with us here at Nerd, but she will always be with us in our memory and holding a special place in our hearts. So now at the last Holy Spirit moment, these four Holy Scriptures that were written on this paper Get this, they were written on a notepad from a Reliance State Bank stationery. I was just taken away. Reliance, how fitting. Reliance, a person or thing in which someone depends, dependence on or trust in someone or something. Reliance is dependence. Seeking support from, leaning on, trust in. Confidence in, conviction in, belief in, faith in. Betty is telling us that our whole being, our trust, our earthly existence relies on our Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ. So I'd like you to take another 30 seconds of silence. But this time, however, take a moment to have that personal conversation with your Lord Jesus. If you feel you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, ask Him into your heart right now. Share your words. Allow Him to move your mountain. Maybe you just need a hug from Him, a shoulder crying. Whatever it is, enjoy that time with Him right now as you close your eyes and spend time in the secret place with your Savior. Please begin. to stop, right? It's quality versus quantity. Being a math teacher by trade, I, of course, had to sneak in some numbers here. Did a little calculation. 30 seconds. How, how many 30-second periods are there in a day? There's 2,880. I think we could all fit in at least 30 seconds. And the more we do, the more we make it a routine like Betty did, the longer that time is just going to float away if we spend time with the Lord and we will find more time. He will provide us time. That's not a concern. A perfect next hymn is Softly and Tenderly, written by Will Thompson, taps into these moments Jesus longing for us to come home here while still on this earth to spend time with him as our matriarch, Betty did.
young to come up and share a tribute. She set up for me. Betty Nevin, a daughter, sister, mom, grandmother, great grandmother, mother in law, and most importantly, a daughter of the one most high, Jesus Christ. Grandma Betty was a true light, reflection of Jesus, and our family's rock. She had such a heart for serving others and humbly putting others before herself. The one word that resembles my grandma is faith. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is a gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. My grandma was a woman of faith, and like a mustard seed, she spread it to her children, grandchildren, friends, and even strangers. Before she went home to be with Jesus, I asked her if she could give me one piece of advice. She said, Always trust the Lord. That is exactly what she did in every aspect of life. Every memory will be cherished. This kind, generous, and loving servant. I know she's dancing with Jesus, and I hope to be half the woman she was. Now for a poem for my grandma. A heart of gold stopped beating, her working hands now rest. This has been one of life's challenges, but they do say, God only takes the best. We sat with you by your bedside, our hearts became crushed and sore. We saw our duty through to the end, until we could do no more. A life of kindness and laughter, your love for all the family is so true. You did your best for all of us, and we will always remember you. You leave behind a legacy, so great it's beyond measure. Our hearts full of beautiful memories, so precious that we will treasure. You have been life's greatest blessing, a good friend to all that you knew. We take great comfort in knowing that we are proud to have been a part of you. Until the time comes, we meet again, who knows how long that it will be. On behalf of your family and friends, we say, God bless and love you, dear Betty. Paul had many powerful benedictions to tap into for this day. And I've never been one that's traditional. This one actually comes from Stephen McWhirter, a modern singer-songwriter who overcame addiction and received God's redemptive power through grace. From his song, Come, Jesus, Come, goes, Come, Jesus, Come. One day he'll come and we'll stand face to face. Come and lay it all down, because it might be today. The time is right now and there's no need to wait. Your past will be washed by rivers of grace. Come, Jesus, come. We've been waiting so long. For the day we turn to heal every hurt and right every wrong. We need you right now and turn this around. Deep down I know this world isn't home. Come, Jesus, come. Amen. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your bountiful grace that we can't earn, it's given by you freely. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this family. Thank you for time spent in your house to worship you. And we thank you for the ability to have the quiet times and personal relationship with you, Lord.
So as we dismiss today, we're going directly to Evergreen Cemetery for committal. The family would like to invite you for a time of food and fellowship, and they don't want you to wait to go through the serving line if you can't make it to the cemetery. As Betty would say, please don't wait, help yourselves down. In doing so, let us bless this food today. Dear Lord, you are our blessing. We ask favor on the food to nourish our body and your word to nourish our soul. You are our blessing in life. Your confidence, our rock, our reward is in serving you as Betty did. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord. We praise you. We honor you. Amen. As we depart the sanctuary during the singing of Amazing Grace, I'm constantly reminded that this amazing hymn was written by John Newton. He was a slave trafficker in the 1700s who found God's redemptive power and grace, leaving his profession and later becoming an adorned and ordained minister. Please rise. 